Hello everybody! The Music Fan is back bringing smiles to the faces, knowledge to the people, and most importantly, music to the masses. And welcome back to my 2020 recap. Now unfortunately my plan didn't necessarily work out with doing a video a day. Last week was pretty busy at work, especially with the Super Bowl. But that gave me enough time to re-listen through all the other albums that I had to listen to before doing my honorable mentions and my top 50. So now I'm in a really good place to put out all these videos quickly. So the game plan is this. Tonight, I am doing my top 10 worst albums of 2020. And then Wednesday through Sunday, I'm gonna be putting out two videos a day. One in the morning, one at night, going over my honorable mentions, my 50 through 41, 40 through 31, 30 through 21, 20 through 11, and then five more videos with the top 10, as I usually do. So be on the lookout. Uh, I'm super excited to be able to get all of this done and uploaded, and I promise to make sure that I get it all done within timely fashion. And then February 15th, President's Day, I'll be going over just some ideas and thoughts for the Grammy nominations. But let's get going. I got a lot to do tonight. So. Like I said, tonight we are taking a look at my top 10 worst albums of 2020. Now, like I said before, I listened to 210 albums from 2020. And the nice thing to say is, even with all the albums I listened to, I wouldn't necessarily say there was a handful or a lot of bad albums. There were some boring albums. There were some albums I wouldn't go back to, but I would say that there wasn't really a lot of bad albums. But I was able to find 10, and honestly, only 10. Now, in terms of my critiques for albums, how, how I go about it is, again, I'm looking at the album in whole, I'm not looking at one song. No matter how big a song was, I'm looking at the album as a whole and seeing how good or bad it was. And in this case, it's just albums that were consistently bad or consistently annoying. There might be one bad song on another album, but if it wasn't consistently bad, I'm not going to be placing it high. I'm going to go over two dishonorable mentions, if you will. One clarification and one that just missed the cut, in my opinion. The first one I want to go over real quick is Bob Dylan's Rough and Rowdy Ways. I said in my previous video on uh, the top 50 albums from the albumtheyear.org that I didn't see the appeal, and I still honestly kind of don't. The storytelling is all right. I feel like it rambles on a little bit, but at this point in time, it has gone to the point where it's bearable. It's not necessarily bad in my opinion. And there are some interesting storylines, you know, talking about death, talking about mortality, and talking about, you know, even on the last song about the JFK assassination, talking about how culture was influenced by the JFK assassination and, you know, like the, the ideas around that time. So I can't necessarily barely be like super mad about this album. You know, at the same time, I'm not a fan of it, but it, at least I'm not really hating this album anymore. I would like to check out more Bob Dylan work at another point in time. The other one that just missed the cut, but honestly, I have enjoyed a little bit more as I heard it again, is uh, Eminem's Music to be Murdered by Side B. This album almost destroyed the work that Side A did. I think Music to be Murdered by Side A, even though I didn't talk about it, is one of Eminem's better albums recently. Kamikaze wasn't great, neither was the album beforehand, but Side A shows a lot of bounce back from Eminem. Side B, on the other hand, feels like it's kind of a victory lap, where he's now like, okay, I did pretty well, this was something that a lot of people are liking, I'm just gonna have fun on this one. And honestly, he does a lot of that. Now, there are some songs that are interesting. Alfred's tune, or Alfred's theme, I actually kind of enjoy it. I like the idea of the bounciness of that song. It gets a little bit weird sometimes, but it finally sunk in eventually. And there are some other decent songs. But I think what's frustrating to me and what a lot of people have talked about recently with Eminem is he's honestly showing his age. He's showing that he's a father. And he's doing a lot of puns. And it's not bad, but when you have to end every pun saying like a blank or trying to explain the joke, it doesn't necessarily go well. I will commend him for being on a joke sometimes where he's like 
trying to explain it, you're like, you know, like this. And then there's like a pause of silence and just crickets and just being like, you know what, fuck you. Like, I, I think that's funny. But overall, it wasn't that great of an album. And it almost ruined my experience with Music To Me Murder by in general. Because, spoiler alert, Music To Me Murder by is going to be in my top 50 somewhere. So that's how frustrated I was with Music To Me Murder by side B. But it saved itself from being in the top 10. So let's get going with the actual top 10. And number 10, we are talking about By Finger Death Punch and F8. Now, to be completely honest, I have enjoyed a lot of Five Finger Death Punch's work, especially at the beginning. Way of the Fist is raw, and I like it. War is the Answer is, to me, their best album. There's a lot of just really solid groove metal songs with a lot of intensity and a lot of really nice melodic ideas. And then American Capitalist, even though it's shorter, I do like a lot of the stuff on there as well. But after The Wrong Side of Heaven, The Righteous Side of Hell, Part 1 and 2, they've kind of honestly fallen off the map, in my opinion. Everything else, Get Your Six and Justice for None, most of those albums are honestly terrible to me. And it, it sucks, because I did like the, their stuff in the past, but it's gotten to a point where I just can't necessarily justify listening to them. And honestly, trying to listen to them has become a chore. And also Zoltan's work with Bad Wolves, especially on their second album, made me very angry at them because what was an awesome first album from Bad Wolves turned into a very bland and uninteresting album on their second attempt. One that I ranked highly in on my top 10 worst albums from last year. So checked out F8 talked about it before it honestly wasn't that bad in my opinion out of all the rest of their work from like their fifth album on it's their best but it honestly isn't saying much in my opinion yes there are some really solid songs on here i think inside out is a really solid opening track full circle has that appeal as well that, that intensity a little bit off actually to me is one of their more interesting songs because yes it's a little bit more modernized but at the same time it brings out a side of five figure death punch that we haven't heard before and then also darkness settles in to me is one of their better songs in, in a long time yeah it does their ballad work which is tired and true in a lot of ways but i think it's pretty solid in my opinion and honestly, Brighter Side of Grey isn't bad either. But the rest of the album, honestly, you can throw away because to me, it it has, again, those, those tried and true attempts that they've always done and also kind of the tone deaf nature of some of these songs. Mother May I has this like, oh, worry about the, the, the future of our nation with all these young people on TikTok and all that stuff. And they kind of just sound out of touch. The other, of course, thing that I got to talk about is their controversial video with Living the Dream. If you haven't seen it, it's dumb. It's a very tone deaf music video for a song that I didn't think was that bad. But to, to recap it, it's basically this video of we're all under the fist of some sort of political group that is forcing people to wear masks and then at the end of it it's like i've had enough this is my freedom they said that they did a tongue-in-cheek who knows but not a great video to put out especially during this whole entire pandemic it doesn't necessarily factor in fully with my with my feeling of this album like i said there are some decent songs on here it just it goes to show that even with decent they can still have one of the worst albums of 2020. Number nine, we have Soul Asylum and Hurry Up and Wait. This one falls under the category for me as with Collective Soul and Blood from last year. Not necessarily a bad album, but one that's just boring. Really, really boring. And like kind of cookie cutter in a way, in terms of like rock. They're having fun, and I understand that. This is actually my first Soul Asylum album. And it's not the best dive into this band. And I understand, you know, they're not necessarily in their heyday anymore. Just like Collective Soul. But it just felt so bland. And the problem I had with this album compared to Collective Soul's album from last year is it's so long. I think it's like 45, 50 minutes long. There are some decent songs. But overall, it just was a plod to listen to not not nothing amazing that stood out but again it's not unbearable it's greatest sin it's just super shallow and super paint by numbers number eight we have la rue and supervision guys 
I hate to say this because I like some of the La Rue stuff. The early work from them with Bulletproof, super catchy, super enjoyable. But as my first dive into a full album of La Rue's, this was such a pain to listen to. And it's because so much of this album sounds super similar. When you have 21st Century flowing into Do You Feel, flowing into Automatic Driver, flowing into International Woman of Leisure, they literally almost all have the same beats. It's very painful. And the, also the other problem is that a lot of these arrangements are super shallow. There's not a lot around it. The shortest one being four minutes, it feels like it goes on forever. I literally like International Woman of Leisure. I think that's a fun song, but it, it, it's such a shame because with everything else that goes on before it, it's so hard to be able to just like sit there and be like, yeah, this is a really cool song. And then the last half, the, the first three have a similar vibe and some of the songs on there have this, using the seventh a lot, but the other problem with this album is La Rue singing. I don't follow her or them, so I don't know if there's anything that's wrong with their vocals or anything like that. Let's put it this way. After listening to this, I re-listened to Bulletproof and there's so much intensity in their voice. There's so much power. And with that, it feels like they're hitting the, the note perfectly every time. This time around, the singing is lazy and kind of nasally. And because of that, you're getting a lot of songs where I couldn't understand what was going on. Like it felt like it was flat at times. And because of that, I was cringing. So like, and a song where the idea of using the seventh in the chord would be awesome. Other Side, I believe, is the song. It would be super cool to use that, and especially in a pop song. But it just felt cringy and crunchy in a way where it shouldn't be. There's not really many like truly enjoyable songs on this album because a lot of it just sounds similar. But it's also not horrible. I think if there was... A little bit of literally just changing the order of the songs around a little bit yeah it'd be still a little bit of repetitive but I think it would have been more manageable and but because how front-loaded one sound was and then how front-loaded it is again on the back end I didn't enjoy it and it's sad because I, I was really looking forward to this album unfortunately it lands in my bottom 10 all right we got a few controversial ones on this list and number seven is one of them that is Destroyer and Have We Met. To be honest, when I first heard it, this was much higher on my hated list. Where do I begin with this? So I've heard a lot of people gush about this album. I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people gush about it, but I've also heard some people not really enjoy it. I fall on the latter half, of course. This is my first Destroyer album, so maybe this is just me not understanding the, the pastiche of this particular artist but my issue with it is it just seems super over indulgent the best way i can describe it at least in this term it feels like a lounge singer who's middle of the road in their 50s and the and their prime has passed them by and it's just this person trying to tell their stories but no one wants to hear it and when someone finally sits down and listens they're like oh crud i need to tell them everything the lyrics the metaphors, the similes, I don't understand. I don't get the idea. I don't get the appeal. It feels very over the top. It feels like somebody who is starting to write lyrics and they're like, okay, let's go as far out there as possible because that's what people love. I kind of get a little bit angry with this because one of my favorite bands, Silver Sun Pickups, you know, for the longest time, a lot of people, their, their negative opinion of it is even though the arrangements are cool, the lyrics go nowhere. They're they're very highbrow and very fancy and trying to like show everyone these weird metaphors and similes and stuff like that. And I get it. I get that a lot of the lyrics don't necessarily mean much, but I don't understand the backlash of that and the utter praise of the lyrics on here. And that wouldn't be a problem if the music was interesting, but honestly, most of it is not. Now, what I will say what changed the second time through is there are some arrangements on here that 
are kind of interesting and there are some lyrics that aren't over the top cheesy. Because of that, I can't say it's the worst thing that I've ever heard, but my god, the beginning of this album, in my opinion, is some of the worst music that I heard all year. And I'm sorry, but that's just my opinion. Don't at me. All right, number six, and I think this is where we're starting to get into the pretty bad stuff. Number six is Machine Gun Kelly with Tickets to My Downfall. You've heard of this album on a lot of worst videos, and honestly, it's deserving. I will say it's one, Grace is one, it's not too long. And second, some of the arrangements aren't bad, even if they are stolen by other people. But two big things. One, whenever Machine Gun Kelly uses trap ideas in the punk arrangements, does not work at all. Garbage. <laughs> and second, honestly, a lot of the guest vocalists do so much better on these songs than Machine Gun Kelly. The one that stands out to me is Halsey. She does a pretty solid job saving a song on here, that being Forget Me Too. I think it's one of the better songs on the album. And like I said, a lot of these songs go by really quickly. So even though Machine Gun Kelly's voice isn't great at all, at least it doesn't stick with you that long. And that's why out of all the bad albums on this list, to me, it's not as horrible just because I can tolerate going through it at least once and not wanting to pull my hair out. All right, top five or bottom five, if you will. Starting off that, we have... Justin Bieber with Changes. Another album that I've seen a few people put on their bottom list, and myself included. It's bland. It's super bland. It's long and it's bland, which are the worst things that a bad album can do. But as long as it's short, bland ain't bad. But with this, it's just super bland and I just can't enjoy it at all. And the problem also is it's just super repetitive in its sounds. Let's put it this way. There are 16 tracks on this album, okay? The first 10 sound very similar and not in good ways. Yummy, one of the worst songs of the year. Second Emotion, not bad, but takes ideas from other songs. Running Over, let's forget it. Little Dicky, waste of time. Forever, Post Malone does better than, than Justin Bieber. Intentions, not bad with the chorus, but everything else, throw away. Again, if it wasn't as repetitive as it was, it could have been better. But it just feels like using the same idea over and over again. And honestly, just like with the La Rue album, a lot of these arrangements are super shallow. The thing that was great with his last album, Purpose, was a lot of the arrangements were super flushed out, giving a little bit more diversity in sound and a little bit more layers. And because of that, nothing sounded super repetitive, and I really enjoyed Purpose. But this one just feels like it was rushed it feels like a lot of the same things because of it it's one of the worst albums of the year by far number four we have aporia by sufjan stevens and lowell brahms i talked about this one in march and at first you know i wasn't super negative on this album but as i left into it over and over again my issues are twofold uh like i said on the previous time i talked about this there are i think 23 tracks it's only about 40 minutes long, so as much as there are a few songs that might be interesting and grow in a nice way in terms of like this new age atmospheric sound, so many of these songs are super quick that they just don't have enough time to build. And a lot of the songs that do build at points just aren't interesting. And a lot of these interludes just are super annoying. For Raymond and Scott, super annoying. The second part that makes it even more frustrating in my opinion is the fact that Swift and Stevens later on put out such a better album. But at first, I didn't like that album because I was scarred by Aporia. The electronic sound from Aporia transitioned over to me listening to Ascension, and I almost hated it. And if I didn't give it a second chance, it wouldn't have nearly been as high as where it was. So not only was this album bad, but it scarred me for another album that came out this year, and that is a sin in my opinion. So yes, this deserves a spot on this list. However, these three are clearly far and away the worst albums of the year. I'm cheating a little bit on number three, but honestly, to my, in my opinion, you could have arranged all these three at being the number one spot and I would not have mind. 
Number three is Hollywood Undead with New Empire Volume 1 and 2. Hey guys, did you ever wonder what Linkin Park would have sounded like if they never evolved and always kept the same ideas over and over again 20 years later? This is what that sounds like. Are there some catchy choruses? Yes. Empire, not a bad chorus. Heart of a Champion, not a bad chorus, especially when you bring on Jacoby Shaddix from Papa Roach. Not bad. Also, Medicate and Time Bomb, Already Dead. There are some decent choruses on here. I will admit that. But overall, first off, the rapping, terrible garbage, especially on Killing It, where there's a line saying about, I can rap faster than the whole damn band. It feels like a bunch of dads rapping. I will say Volume 2 Sounds a little bit better. Volume 1, to me, if I just ranked it on its own, would have been the worst album of the year. Very quick, but also very annoying. A lot of very similar ideas, the rapping being terrible, the guitar parts sounding very much the same, and honestly, the, the lead singer doing their best Chester Bennington impression does decently, but definitely not Chester. But the second volume is a little bit more diverse in sound, and the people who are on it bring a little bit more to the table than just volume one. Also, somehow they got Tech Nine to join them, which is to me crazy, but at least that gives it a little bit of a boost to being only the third worst album of the year. Then we're down to two. You kind of guess where what one of them is gonna be, but this one here is gonna be a little controversial. And uh, I was, trying my best not to make it my number one worst album of the year. This one is going to make me come off maybe a, a little bit more old, a little bit more old school, a little bit you don't understand what you're talking about. And feel free, feel free to let me know what I'm missing here. But number two is the Lil Uzi Vert with Eternal Take. Guys, I've said it before. I'm not a trap person. I've tried. I've tried with a lot of albums. A lot of these bigger albums that a lot of people have talked about, Invasion and Privacy by Cardi B, Afterworld by Travis Scott, anything that Migos has done, I haven't enjoyed it. I may have enjoyed one song or a couple songs, but as a whole, I have not enjoyed a single album that is solely trap. I've enjoyed some of Megan Thee Stallion's work, especially with good news and fever from last year, but that's not fully trap and it's a little bit more fun. I've talked to a lot of friends of mine, especially younger friends of mine who are more into this scene and have asked for examples of good full trap albums. Someone told me about Savage Mode 2. Someone told me about Polo G the Goat and I will check those out at one point in time. But in my opinion, I have yet to be able to find a true trap album I have enjoyed. A lot of people have talked about Eternal Take being one of the best albums of the year. Some people have talked about it being mediocre at best. I find it unbearable. One, it's an hour long album, which isn't necessarily bad. I'll give you an example Juice World, Legends Never Die. It's not necessarily fully trap, but I thoroughly enjoyed that album. And the reason for it is because there was a lot of diversity in sound a lot of different beats, a lot of different approaches, even a song with marshmallow and guitar. My problem with Eternal Take is that with all the, the songs on there that are pretty quick, there's only a handful of songs that sound any different in beats. The autotune isn't there all the time, but what it is, super annoying. The lyrics, again, like I said in my previous video, no problem with wrong to lyrics. Love what Megan Thee Stallion does. There's a lot of rock songs that I love that are super raunchy. Like, like I said, again, in a generation, in a time where we're trying to be more sex positive and more sex conscious and not as demeaning, why is there so many songs about fucking a slut or graphic things about she's only there for me to put my dick in her mouth or stuff like that. Songs that are very demeaning for the woman. I'm not clutching my pearls on this, but it's super interesting to me that in an age where we're trying to be a little bit more sex positive and talking about being more conscious about this stuff, how people who are looked up to in our media are still putting out songs that are very much demeaning. And the worst part is, 
as I'm saying this, I know I'm sounding super old and I'm sounding like I don't get it. And maybe I don't. However, there wasn't a single part of this album where I was like, I really enjoyed this. Maybe there was a song or two where I was like, okay, I can see the appeal. And there were some interesting rap ideas. But overall, I can't remember any. And I have no interest in going back and trying to find that out. The only reason why it's not number one in my opinion, and I was so close to putting it number one, is honestly, I didn't have high expectations for this album like other people did. And because of that, I can't sit here and be super angry about this album if I had no intentions of it being good. I, I was hoping that it would. I was hoping that a quote-unquote trap classic, a trap masterpiece, would be something that I could get into and be like, hey, I can see the progress there. I can enjoy what is there. But no, not for me. However, still doesn't beat number one. It's close. But of course, I think we all know what number one is. And that is Green Day's Father of All. Is it a zero? No. It is not as bad as Anthony Van Tano said. And I think he even showed it when he didn't even put it his number one worst album of the year. The thing is, I didn't listen to some of the other stuff that he did, so I'm only left with something that honestly, even though it's less than a half hour, is super bland, and the biggest reason why it's number one in my opinion is it's disappointing. It's super disappointing. Now, there are rumors that they put this out so they could be out of their contract, and I applaud it for them. Like, congrats on doing that. But the issue here is with a band that has put in so much great work over the years with Dookie, with Warning, with American Idiot, with 21st Century Breakdown, with honestly Revolution Radio. I enjoyed that one. Is it worse than Uno Dos Tre? No. That one's a little bit longer and a little bit more blander, but it sounded like they weren't even trying on a lot of this. A lot of it was super bland, super arena rock, and kind of like with Five Finger Death Punch, kind of tone deaf in ways. Their song, Oh Yeah, which is super annoying, has a music video that is also very much the the vanity of social media. And yes, there's plenty of that, but it just sounds like a bunch of old people nagging about the younger generation. And even, again, how they approached advertising this with no Swedish songwriters, no trap beat, 100% unadulterated rock. Yeah, that's definitely true but it's super bland and super uninteresting. And from a band that I've really enjoyed for years and years and years, it's sad. And because of that it is my number one worst album of 2020. So those are my opinions, those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about this list. There's probably some controversial stuff on here. I would love for you to explain why I'm wrong in the most constructive way possible. And I would also love to hear what your worst albums from 2020 were. Other than that, if you enjoyed what I did, give this video a like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so. There's going to be more videos coming out, especially now that we got through all the bad. And we're finally getting into my favorite albums, which I'm super excited to talk about. I've been working so hard on figuring out my, my, my list. There were some late additions to my honorable mentions and my top 50, and I'm super excited to talk to you all about this. But the only way that you're going to be able to see this is if you subscribe to the channel, and let other people know about this too if they are so interested as well. So next video, we're finally getting into my favorite stuff. But before we get into the top 50, I gotta go over my honorable mentions, which you will see next time. So until then, this is Music Fan, and I am signing off.